If you're listening to this story, then it means that I decided to face my fear and finally share my personal story. And this is uncomfortable for me to do, but I'm challenging myself to share my personal story because I know it's so important to be authentic and vulnerable in order to challenge the stigma surrounding mental health. And those perfectly curated stories that we constantly see on social media and on the internet. And I think that it's not reflective of reality. And it can be really difficult for people to share their own personal struggles because they're afraid of being judged or being viewed differently or being viewed as being weak um, or whatever other reasons or excuses we might come up with in our minds. I'm choosing to share my personal story in the hopes of breaking down that stigma and helping you to recognize that it's okay to not be okay at the risk of being cliche Um, and in the hopes that you may feel understood and may be able to relate to some of my personal experience. Welcome to Calmly Coping. I'm your host, Tati Garcia. I'm a licensed therapist and a high-functioning anxiety coach. Calmly Coping is the podcast for people who struggle with anxiety and high-functioning anxiety. Each Wednesday, you'll hear informative episodes with actionable tips about decreasing anxiety, adopting a healthy mindset, and managing your time and energy so you can live a calm and balanced life. Let's get started. I came up with so many excuses before sitting down to record this episode, and here are just a few of them. First, that it's unprofessional to share your personal story, which was something that came up in my mind that just isn't true. Another excuse I came up with is that therapists aren't supposed to get personal because it's not about you, it's about your client. And that is true in a way, but that's really only applicable in the context of a therapist or client relationship, which this is not. And this is one of the excuses that has been the mo- one of the most challenging for me to face, that idea that as a therapist, as a coach, as a professional, it's unprofessional somehow for me to share my story. And this is one of those limiting beliefs that I had to work on facing, and I am still working on facing and overcoming myself. And another excuse I came up with is that my story really isn't that interesting or exciting, Are people even going to care about it? And this is an example of me minimizing my experience and thinking that it's not important enough. And this is the exact thing that I help my clients do, to see that their experiences and their opinions are important. And in your mind, you may try to make it seem like this isn't that big of a deal. My problem isn't that big. Other people have bigger struggles. And this is an example of minimizing your experience so that you feel like The things that you're struggling with aren't as important, and that makes you feel less than as a result. And it makes you feel like, you know, maybe I'm not as important. Um, And this can be a result of feeling like at some point in your life, maybe you weren't seen or heard or didn't feel as important. So, those are just some examples of the excuses that I came up with mentally that prevented me from sharing my personal experience, whether it's on social media or an email, I've become more comfortable and I've started to do it slowly. Um, And this episode is just that final step in really sharing my story and my experience. And so here it goes. So one common thread I've heard is that when somebody goes into becoming a therapist or a coach or both like me, then it's common that they're helping people who are in situations that they have personally overcome in the past. And this is especially true when you choose to focus on a specific niche or specialty. That may be because you personally have overcome this problem or you've struggled with this problem in the past. And that is the case when it comes to my story and my experience with anxiety and specifically high-functioning anxiety. So I didn't even really fully understand what anxiety was until I was in college. I studied AP psychology in high school, um, but to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. It was senior year and I had senioritis. 
Um, but my anxiety became serious enough for me to pay attention to in college after my grandfather passed away. And it was at this point that I decided to go to my college counseling center, center for therapy. Um, I was struggling with worry, panic, and physical symptoms such as difficulty breathing and tightness in my chest. I remember one specific instance where I was on the campus bus and I just started feeling like I needed to escape. Like I started feeling like my heart rate was growing up, going up, my breathing was getting shallow, and I was like, I just need to get out of here. And so I just, at the next stop, just got off of the bus and I was like, this isn't okay. This there's something wrong. And so that was when I started to go to counseling. Um, in hindsight, learning more about anxiety and reflecting, I have realized that I've struggled with anxiety pretty much for as long as I can remember. You know, I remember being a young child and feeling really nervous and staying up in the middle of the night worrying about if there would be a fire in my house or other things that I experienced throughout my life that are just signs and signals to me now as an expert in this and as I have more knowledge and experience I realize like wow this is something that has been a part of my life now coming up to you know after undergrad and going into grad school this is when I started to really face my anxiety and learn ways to cope with it and learn ways to manage it so that I wasn't getting to the level of experiencing panic attacks as much or other significant anxiety like symptoms where like I would go through periods where I was so worried about something that I wouldn't be able to focus on anything else and anything else that happened would make me irritable and I was moving past that, and that's when it turned into the high-functioning anxiety. And so this was when I started getting into those habits or those behaviors of like overworking, putting tons of pressure on myself, procrastinating, people-pleasing. So all of this stuff was there under the surface in some way, but I don't think it really came to a head until I started working full-time as a therapist right at the end of grad school. Um, this was when the overwhelm came to the surface for me and it just felt like too much. So this is when I felt like I was putting so much pressure on myself because of the responsibility that I had. And I was often comparing myself to others in a negative way. So I was always thinking that I wasn't good enough and other people were doing things better. And so I had these impossibly high standards that I just need to read more. I just need to study more. I just need to really practice what I preach and put myself into getting better at this so that then I'll feel more confident so that then I won't feel as anxious. And all of this stuff was great. Like it was helping me. And because of the pressure that I was putting on myself and all of the work that I was doing, you know, it benefited my clients and it benefited me as a professional. However, this was like a band-aid, like the overworking and the constantly trying to do things externally to make myself feel better and more confident was a band-aid as to like what I was struggling with underneath was this feeling that like just inherently I wasn't good enough or there was something wrong with me or it, you know, no matter what I did, it, it wouldn't be enough. You know, then this transitioned as I became a manager with more responsibility working in agency into the feelings of overwhelm and just like the actual workload and responsibility that came to be a lot. I pull this quote because um, a while ago when I first started helping people with high functioning anxiety, learning more about it, I looked back at my old journal entries to see if I could understand maybe what I had been going through in the past. And so this is a literal quote from my journal from a few years ago when I was at one of my most difficult points of struggling with high-functioning anxiety. Quote, my life is a constant to-do list running through my head in which I feel as though I can't relax until everything is done, which is never. I feel guilty for relaxing because there is more to be done. The cycle is never ending. Unquote. This is a pretty good representation of how I felt. And it's it's really hard to encompass this in in one like explanation. But, you know, things fluctuated throughout times. You know, there were times where I felt like 
it was just overwhelming and too much. And then there were it would go in phases. There would be periods where I would feel more comfortable and I would start to to face my fears and and start to just put myself out there and do things that I was uncomfortable with that would result in more confidence. You know, I remember that I would constantly scan my planner and look at my to-do list and look at all the things that I had to do and get those things done as a way of feeling in control and a way of feeling like I had that purpose and direction to thrust myself headfirst into my work. And that was because that was what I had control over. You know, I knew that if I tried my hardest, then at least I wouldn't be able to blame myself for not doing enough and have to deal with the guilt. And so it just turned into this endless cycle where I would feel this internal guilt and shame and feeling like I wasn't good enough. And then that would result in me pushing myself headfirst into work to avoid those feelings of anxiety, to avoid those feelings of not being good enough, and to also perpetuate that belief that, you know, I just need to work more and do more in order to be quote unquote good enough. You know, that hustle mentality of I just need to move my way up the ladder and keep on working and eventually I will feel happy and fulfilled. Throughout this process, I was met with thoughts of self-doubt that I have no idea what I'm doing or I'm not prepared enough or I'm not good enough. So I pushed through this anxiety in order to move my way up in my career. Um, I pushed through those feelings of worry and doubt and insecurity. And I thought that if you know I just continued, then I would eventually be good enough. And it was this way for years. So working hard, pushing myself harder, sacrificing self-care, and moving up in my career. Um, Because this is what had helped me in the past. This is what helped me be a great therapist and give such attention to my clients. You know, that's that's one of the strengths, I think, that comes from high-functioning anxiety is that because you're so attentive, and this was the case for me because I was so attentive to wanting to do the best that I really put a lot of attention into the work that I do. And I want to make sure that I am helping people to the best extent that I can. And I still do that. And I still do that while also reflecting on and addressing my self-care and filling up my cup first from within. So the turning point for me where I started to go into this phase of then realizing like, wow, I really need to take care of myself. It wasn't that I wasn't taking care of myself at all, but it just wasn't balanced. Like I I wasn't aware of how much I was really sacrificing my self-care and throwing myself into work as a form of avoidance. So I remember driving my car home from work and getting a call and the conversation just triggered something where I felt like just these feelings of overwhelm that, you know, it's never good enough. There's always these problems. Things are going to keep on coming up. And I remember intense emotion coming up, this combination of anger and resentment and frustration and overwhelm. And, you know, it's nothing about the job or the responsibilities. Like, um, it's just that it wasn't the right fit for me and it wasn't what I now realize I needed in order to feel fully fulfilled. Um, as I moved my way up the ladder, that gets you further and further away from actually working with people and clients. And so I realized that it's really important for me to work with clients and to help people. Essentially, you know, I got into this place where I wasn't putting myself first. I was presenting this calm and successful picture on the outside, but on the inside, I was full of doubt, anxiety, fear, and insecurity. So after this point, this was actually when I, that day I decided I'm putting in my notice. And at this point, I had already been building up my private practice. So I already was at the point where I knew like I'm going to be quitting soon. I just wasn't expecting to quit that soon. So this was like the catalyst that got me to decide to quit my full-time job and go full into private practice therapy. And then eventually I also added high-functioning anxiety coaching to that as well as my online courses. So 
This point was really only the beginning of my journey to overcoming high-functioning anxiety. That's because any self-improvement journey is challenging. It's not easy to really face the things that you've been avoiding and to work on changing your mindset, changing the way that you think about things, starting to change your behaviors. And that means by um, practicing self-care, managing your energy throughout the day, becoming, you know, learning ways to be productive so that you're not like, let's say, working or caregiving or doing whatever 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but that you're intentionally taking that time to care for yourself. I had to learn a lot of things. I had to learn how to stop doubting myself. I had to learn how to truly overcome my fear and anxiety. And most of all, I had to find, learn how to finally start being kind to myself and to stop putting so much pressure on myself. And this has been a challenging process. Here are some of the things that I did to, to do that. I did attend training. So I, I attended um, a course, Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which is an eight-week program developed by John kabat And that training was really transformational where I learned all about mindfulness. And mindfulness is really becoming more aware in the present moment in a non-judgmental way. And it's that present moment awareness that is really the first step to making any change. And especially when it comes to anxiety, because the your way of thinking with anxiety tends to be future focused. I also attended a mindful self-compassion training, which self-compassion is a really big component of my therapy and coaching. And it, this is just the concept of speaking to yourself like you would to a friend, challenging that inner critic, recognizing that you don't need to be ridiculously hard on yourself in order to be successful and in order to feel fulfilled. And it's actually the opposite. I've also done tons of reading. Um, I'm a huge proponent of reading and education. But here's the thing. So doing it this way has taken years and it's been a challenging journey. And I've packaged everything I've learned and all of the techniques taken from my training and experience as a therapist in addition to what I've learned from my mindfulness, my self-compassion training, and more. And that's what I'm going to be teaching in my signature group coaching program, Calm and Balanced. So this is the curriculum that I've used with my one-to-one coaching clients, and now I am launching it for the first time in a group coaching format. If that is something that you're interested in learning more about and getting first access to that, as well as exclusive discounts and bonuses, you can go to calmlycoping.com slash waitlist to get more information. Here's the thing that overcoming high-functioning anxiety has resulted in for me. So it's allowed my confidence and my authenticity to bloom. Case in point, you know, I would not be recording an episode like this in the past when I was really struggling with anxiety and high functioning anxiety. And especially, and this isn't to get to the point of labeling and over labeling, um, but a big thing that I used to struggle with was also social anxiety. So putting myself out there on social media, on this podcast, has definitely been a journey. And has definitely been something that I've had to consistently work on. But, you know, rather than just hiding in the dark like I would have in the past and fearing that it's never good enough, feeling like I just need to get to the next step and then I'll be happy. That was a big thing I used to struggle with, too, feeling like, okay, once I accomplish this, then I'm going to be happy. Once I do this, then I'll be happy. Um, The problem is that that point never comes because you're always just working on the next thing. Then something else comes up that it's like, okay, then then once I get this, then I'll be happy. I focused on working on being happy right now and being in the present because to be cliche, that's all we really have. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not happy 100% of the time and I still have my struggles. You know, I still have these difficulties come up where I feel doubtful, where I feel insecure, where I feel unsure as to what I'm doing, especially as an entrepreneur now. And I think a lot of that goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur because there's not that structure and that certainty that comes from working for somebody else. But The difference now is that instead of overthinking and doubting myself and allowing that to hold me back 
or going into that fate, that place of overworking as a way of avoidance, I'm able to catch myself before I get into those rabbit holes, as I like to call them. I'm able to recognize what's going on and change my way of thinking and change my behaviors so that I don't get into those zones of anxiety and overwhelm and high functioning anxiety. Um, I know when it's okay to take a step back and I know when it's okay to work. And I've gotten better at listening to my mind and my body and doing what intuitively feels like the next best step for me. I really focus on feeling confident and grounded while I meet with my therapy and coaching clients. And I focus on taking intentional recharging breaks throughout my day to sit in my beanbag chair and read, go for a walk around the block, or enjoy an episode from my favorite show. You know, I'm focused on being present and compassionate for myself. And that looks like focusing on the present moment, accepting and processing my emotions, and focusing on empowering beliefs rather than my old beliefs of hustle, busyness, and I'm not allowed to take breaks. Like I said, it's taken a while to break through these old washed up beliefs, but it's been so incredibly rewarding. And I hope that me sharing my story with you has been helpful for you to understand me better. And maybe you can relate with it and maybe you can just relate to parts of it. You know, I'd I'd love to hear your story and I'd love to hear about your experience with high functioning anxiety because In bringing things to the light and in sharing these things that make you feel uncomfortable, that's when you grow. And that's when you're able to recognize that these fears that you have in your head about feeling like, well, my story is not that important or this problem isn't that big. It's just a story that you've created in your mind. And it's just that anxiety and that fear wanting to keep you safe. And it's all just a facade. It's not true. And, you know, one of the biggest things with any struggle is that it grows in shame. And shame is that feeling that there's something wrong with you. And anytime you're able to just share things and get them out there, whether it's to your journal or whether it's in our community, Calmly Coping, that you can find on Facebook, which is my community for high achievers with high functioning anxiety. And you can find that by going to calmlycoping.com slash group. Or whether it's through sharing it with a friend or a therapist or a coach, taking that first step to just getting things out there and feeling more open and accepted is a huge step in starting to grow and feel less insecure and feel less like you're a turtle inside its shell. And this is kind of that metaphor of the turtle coming out of a shell and feeling like it's okay to be who you are authentically. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with you. And one final note, you know, I want to point out is that if you're currently in that space of feeling like there's something wrong with me or other people are doing things better than me or I need to do things in a different way, I want you to know that you are exactly where you need to be and it's possible to grow. And so if you're feeling like I'm not doing things fast enough or I'm not at the place where I should be in my life, That's not true because there's no shoulds. Your life is exactly the way it needs to be right now. So this episode was a little bit different for me. Um, I am amazed that I've been speaking this long just about my story. Again, I I hope that this was helpful for you and I'd I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, You can reach out to me on Instagram at Tatiana GLPC or send me an email at Tati at BeCalmWithTati.com. Thanks so much for spending this time with me. And until next time, be calm. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please share this episode with a friend and please subscribe and leave me a review on iTunes. Also, remember to check me out online at calmlycoping.com and connect with me on Instagram at Tatiana G L P C. All content here is for informational purposes only. This content does not replace the professional judgment of your own mental health provider. Please consult a licensed mental health professional for all individual questions and issues. Till next time, I'm Tati, and this has been Calmly Coping. Calmly Coping.